Creason. All right, here we go. Spawning in the bottom left-hand corner of Newkirk Precinct. It's the blue Terran player, and we call him EG Alive. And his opponent. Uh-oh, Ben. Jim is going crazy. <laughs> Red Protoss player, IG Jim. And what is Jim up to, Ben? A nine scout, or even quicker than that. Like, how often do you see that these days? I did this for a while in the Wings of Liberty because I was really stubborn, and I always believed that this was the way to harass your opponent early game. But that's a super, super quick scout. Yeah, it is a super quick scout. He's not getting a, a forge or doing any sort of crazy proxy shenanigans, so I guess oh. he just wants to be sure that he's not playing against any kind of craziness. And that's, that's so bizarre. I haven't seen this for a very long time. and also not something that Jim has done in his previous games. This is, of course, not the first PvT Jim is playing throughout this entire tournament. He played against Major in the round of 32, and he won convincingly 2 to nothing while playing from China. Of course, very impressive. And over here in the offline, uh, or in the round of, 30, in round of 16, I should say, which was offline, of course, here in Rancho Cucamonga, roughly one hour from here, uh, he was not able to defeat Paul. This Paul took him out 2 to nothing. And Paul perhaps made Jim look kind of weak in uh, PvT, but then again, Paul makes a lot of people look weak. Weak. That's just something that Paul does. Yes, sir. Uh, right now we're seeing pretty standard-looking opening out of uh, out of Jim. Gateway down. He's going to go ahead and drop that quick cybernetic score. So nothing too particularly noteworthy yet, Kev. Alive is going to wall Jim in, so this poor little probe is stuck. Yeah, actually, surprising opening, considering the fact that he's already going for a refinery, but uh, no Reaper out on the map. That surprised me a little bit. Most of the time when Ter Terrans open up with gas these days, it is for the Reaper. So it seems like uh, Alive either is going to uh, go for a reactor really quick, or he's just going to drop a factory ASAP. Jim being as annoying as possible. Of course, this super early scout does mean one thing. It means that your probe stays alive for quite a while, and this probe will finally fall. Not before, uh, well, oh, he did fall before he could see this reactor. It's kind of annoying for Alive, perhaps it delayed Alive's build order a little bit. But I kind of really wonder what's going on in Jim's mind. Like, what is he so afraid of that he really desperately wants to get that trope in, in the base? You know, what could it be? Maybe yeah. he's very really worried about some sort of widow mine opening? I, I don't know. Impossible to know. Looks like Alive's going to go ahead and drop a bunker uh, in his natural, so hinting at some intention of expansion and saving up quite a bit of money. But he's actually dropping a factory, Kev. Yep. So this is a fake expand. Mm -hmm. He's going to try to trick Jim out a little bit. This works actually very well for Jim. Jim is going to go ahead and drop this target in the back of his base. Now, this is not a big surprise because, uh, for instance, Minigun loves his playstyle. And the reason why Minigun loves his playstyle is because he saw Jim use it a couple of times and he thought it was good. Jim is kind of known for this. Maxed loves it as well. He tried it yesterday. Had a ridiculous game against Tasia. Was able to win that one. Uh, unfortunately for Maxed, was not able to win the series. Uh, but, you know, this goes back to my Wings of Liberty knowledge, man. And whenever I opened Stargate in Wings of Liberty and I played against a one base Terran, I was loving life, man. That's really good. You get a little bit of map control. You're able to snipe Metavax early on. The only thing that's, of course, dangerous are Widow Mine drops. If the Widow Mines do arrive in your base and you do not have an Oracle out yet, which I don't think he's going to do because we know Jim, he, oh, actually he's going to open up with an Oracle. Normally he likes to open up Phoenixes. So as long as he keeps the Oracle alive and follows this up with Phoenixes, I think this is a pretty good opening for Jim. It looks that way. Um, Nexus has started up for Jim, as has the command center for Alive. So both of these guys transitioning on over into their two-base uh, game plan. Uh, but it also looks like Alive's plan is that Widow Mind drop that you were talking about. He's already produced one. Starport's finishing up. There's no tech lab down anywhere. So well, he's actually just going to go for a single Widow Mind, which is defensive. Oh, that's actually mind. really smart. He did see that Stargate with the SCV he had had hidden, and uh, Widow Mind will of course take out an Oracle incredibly quickly. Jim is going to be really careful, but of course you can spot the Widow Mines even when they're buried. You do have to put on your glasses though, Ben. You need to watch the game in HD. Otherwise, it can get tricky. And will Jim see this? It's, uh... uh yeah, he does. Four Marines is not enough to kill this Oracle. Oracle could, uh, could fight this, but instead he's just going to skirt all the way to the outside, activating the energy and realizing oh. exactly where that Widow Mine is. He's I not going to take that chance. Kind of like this already. Six Marines can be enough, but they have to be firing all at the same time, and they kind of are. I yep. think this is not lawful or alive, and Jim is going to lose his Oracle. I would say almost rather carelessly. He did a little bit of damage, but... Uh, miscalculating there, thinking that he could 
uh, out muscle the Marines, and boy, is he wrong. He is now moving on over into his Phoenix production and also dropping his Robo, so Jim going to show us some more of that Phoenix Colossus play. He only has two sockets right now. He's going to have to take care of these Hellions, man. These Hellions getting free reign right now with this mineral line, getting a couple of posts for free. Uh, very good for a life, because all the SVs that he lost, these two Hellions are already making up for it, and these Hellions are almost free. Just a few minerals. Yep. Six workers killed there by alive, so his harass a little bit more effective than Jim's thus far, and he's even going to load these up and head into the main base, so we, uh, we were right to predict drop play. We were wrong in that oh it's my a God. Hellion drop and not Widow Mines, and, and instantly a Photon Overcharge, but how many probes are going to die in the meantime? Looks like not that many. Uh, but still, though, this is really painful. You're not supposed to lose this many probes in this phase of the game. Jim will clean this up, of course, with the Photon Overcharge. He's still three workers ahead, but three workers ahead against Double Orbital means you're, you're basically behind. Certainly when you take into consideration that this third command center is in production as well. I think that the life can uh, be very, very satisfied with how this, is uh, how this went so far. These Phoenixes, it's inevitable that they're going to get a couple of SCV kills here and there. That's not something you can really do too much about until you have a lot of Steam Marines, and that's not something that Alive has right now. But even if he ends up losing two, three SCVs in the process, by the time he has a third command center, his economy is going to be better than the economy of Jim. And that's one of the cornerstones of how to deal with this Phoenix Colossus thing. If you have way more, uh, way more income, you have yeah. to produce way more Vikings, and you should be fine. Phoenixes will lift and kill this building SCV. That's a little annoying, but yep. uh, of course Alive... He isn't going to care that much. He immediately pulls one more worker, and we'll finish up that command center. Jim right now getting his robotics bay, adding in those extra gateways, and, and continuing with his Phoenix production. So uh, he'll be able to pretty easily deny or at least discourage any kind of drop play from Alive. But Alive is really... Oh, here's the, uh, the Widowmine drop. And the, oh, probes! Don't you do it, probes! Widowmine gets two probes. That could have been worse. There's another Widowmine, though. It's going to be unloaded in the main base right now. This is not enough DPS for Jim. Oh, oh he's got to be so careful, and that uh, mine is going to actually... Two more. Blow up two more Oh, well, that's harvesters. once more pretty damn good. I mean, it's always 2-2-2, two, 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 but now throughout the entire game, Alive has killed 13 probes already. That's a lot of probes. You can, you're not able to lose that many probes as a Protoss player if you open up like this. Yeah, it really adds up. It adds up to be uh, a substantial disadvantage. And uh, as we can see, we have... Uh, two players with two bases with even harvesters, but Alive has finished his yeah. third command center. It's going to be landing, and that is just going to catapult him ahead. And above all, this is not really a build where Jim can be very aggressive in the near future. So this also means that Alive can just go ahead, land his command center already in the low ground. Normally you'd say that might be a little bit risky. Right now Alive has nothing to worry about. Sure, there are a few gateway units. There might be a Colossus out on the field soon, even though that's still going to take 60 seconds. Those Phoenix is not very strong right now in the straight-up engagement. Um... Alive's economy is going to be very, very good. And I think that by the time that Alive is maxed out, Jim is hovering around 140, 150 supply. And that's going to be hard for him to defend, certainly without Cyclone. Which is just something that he's not able to afford right now, as Phoenix Colossus is, of course, very gas intensive. Now, uh, for the time being, Alive's going to continue to sit back and just play it very slow. Jim's third Nexus is building. He's trying to establish that Colossus count. And the supplies are still pretty even, but I feel yeah. like this is the stage in the game where Terran really starts to balloon ahead. His army count is going to start climbing so much more quickly. Look at all these barracks with add-ons yes. uh, being, uh, being created. And not just that, but the second star put is down as well, so that means two, three Vikings at a time, or two Medivacs and a Viking, however you want to do it. Alive is going to get a very superior army uh, in roughly two, three minutes. And I'm quite worried for Jim right now. Are Jim credible? Of course, it's awesome to have the Chinese guys here once more. Of course, big shout out to Blizzard as well for helping out and getting them here. Because uh, I'm truly, truly happy we had them here. We had the pleasure of hosting them. We saw them funny. Max said he's an extremely funny guy. I've known him since Warcraft three times, but yeah, he never really stood out to me in Warcraft three times. It was all about back then Sky, Fly, you know, the big names. But mm. uh, Max said is actually a super colorful character as well. So it was so much fun. And I'm glad that they're here. But right now, Ben is looking a little dicey. Yeah, uh, now he's not, he's not necessarily out of it. Uh, he, no. uh, we can see on the supplies that he is staying fairly even for now. Uh, but the, the problem is going to come when, when the fighting actually starts. There's going to be so much bio on the ground, so many Vikings in the sky. Uh, I really think Jim needs to start considering a transition into Storm, but I, I don't. there's just no way for him to, to gain the time for that. You have to worry about the upgrades as well. That's why we see both forges going down right now, which is still quite a bit behind the upgrades of Alive. And there's only so much you can do, Ben. Even when you're on three bases, when you're producing Phoenix, Colossus, and you're upgrading of two forges, like you just don't have gas to get high Templars and Storm out. That's just way too expensive right now. I don't think he even has a Twilight Council out yet on the map, so he wouldn't have to invest in that as well. He's already up to eight, nine Phoenixes. That's, uh, I don't think... Well, 
Maybe this Marine spotted a few of them here and there. But above all, look at this Viking production. Four at a yeah. time. It's a double reactive starboard right now. And it's just a matter of time before our life is really yep. going to cut a fill down. There are 10 Phoenixes out. There are six Vikings out. And with uh, Vikings being produced four at a time, it won't, won't take long at all for Alive to overtake Jim in the in the battle for air superiority. And I think in general Vikings just kind of crush Phoenixes when they when they fight heads up. It's the, a uh, Definitely. Well, I mean, if you just let them stand there and just like let the Phoenix engage, then Phoenixes do pretty damn good against Vikings, but it's mostly the dance, the back and forth. Of course, Vikings with superior range, and not just that, like Phoenixes can really not idle above Marines. Well, it takes a little longer for Stalkers and whatnot to kill all the Vikings, so Phoenixes are very good against Vikings, but most of the time you won't find yourself in a position where you can see how good your Phoenixes are against the Vikings. Phoenix count is... Uh, intimidating to say the least, there are 11 of them now. I mean, one thing that's for sure, Ben, is that Alive doesn't think about dropping. We have seen Alive before, we saw him in his games against us earlier this tournament where he was just dropping all over the place, playing very well. But uh, that's not something you want to do against 11 Phoenixes. By the time that one Marine is unloaded, your matter of fact, like, yeah. Yep. I guess uh, pretty good evidence that Alive spent some time thinking about how to play against Jim and uh, yep. preparing a bit for the matchup, not bothering with. Uh, investment into heavy drop play and instead focusing more so on getting the units out he needs to deal with the Phoenixes and the Colossi. Both players uh, working on their air upgrades as well. We can see the air weapons plus one going down for a life and same time we can see the cybernetic score is slowly but steady just spinning around getting plus one for those Phoenixes. I don't know Ben, we've seen Jim do some pretty crazy stuff with Colossus uh, Phoenix but I'm still uh, worried that if, like, Alive's control is so good. Alive is not going to be a Terran player who lets his Viking shoot at the Phoenix. No, sure, if they're in range, he will get a couple of free shots off. But in the straight-up engagement, well, he's going to snipe those Colossus and he's going to one-shot them with this crazy amount of Vikings. He's going to have 20 Vikings out, which is uh, <laughs> almost enough to one-shot two Colossi at a time. If you're really good. <laughs> <laughs> so that, uh, I mean, I do shoot two missiles at a time. Maybe that's something for Alive to consider for his highlight reel. Here he goes. He's going to push across <laughs> the map. Now maxed out. He has exactly 20 Vikings, exactly 20 Marauders. And he's sprinkling in a small handful of medevacs and about 36 Marines. Now Jim realizing that this is not an army that he, uh, that he can engage carelessly is trying to position in a, in a spot. Okay, there's the photon overcharge immediately. I do like that he's a lot of zealots. It's going to make it a little harder for this army to just stand there and deal with it. But might have our first wow. engagement here. Every time the Vikings shoot, something dies. Phoenix is doing the same. Those Vikings are, uh, are doing just what you said, Kev. Focusing down the Colossi. Bio, Mike going back. Jim getting a good fight on the ground, but the Colossi just cannot stand up to the focus Viking fire. A single Colossus wow. remains. Phoenix is actually do yeah. kill off the Vikings. Wow, that was actually pretty Jim. Incredible there, Ben, by Jim. Yes, he lost a lot of Colossus, but... Sure, our life economy has been pretty good throughout the Man. entire game, but 20 Vikings is 20 Vikings. Sweet Jesus, what that's a, bizarre, a really big investment. What a bizarre choice that forces. It's like, okay, Alive, you can fight the Vikings, and then the Colossi are going to do damage, or you can kill the Colossi and lose all your Vikings. I must say, this is quite an interesting spot to take your fort base. <laughs> Haven't really seen that too often. This uh, Christopher Columbus is going to find it. Like, oh, Marco. Did, did not expect that. <laughs> now, the thing is, uh, with... Oh, here comes Alive. He's finally going to start dropping. Very risky with the, with the Phoenixes out on the map. Those Medivacs are not long uh, to this There's so world. many Phoenixes, though. Oh, the Medivacs go right down, and now the Marines are going to get lifted, and uh, Jim wow, transitioning Jim. over into Mass Viking... Or ba Mass Phoenix play, I should say. He's going to do a great job of cleaning that up. Uh, supplies now are actually favoring Jim a little bit. 160 <laughs> supply against 158. Uh, that one Marauder. <laughs> Thought he won the war. But he did it. Lonely Marauder. That's what happens when, you know, like you lose your internet connection. You just have no idea what's going on in the rest of the battlefield. You're just watching that countdown, hoping <laughs> the other guy disconnects before you do. <laughs> it never works that Couple way. Couple of though. High Templars being walked in right now. Because, uh, of course, with that Ford base soon being... Uh, up, for, up and running for Jim as well. He can definitely invest into a Twilight Council and a Templar Arcus as well. I believe Storm is even ready. Let's take a look. Where are his high Templars? Man? I don't think he has any. Yeah, he has Storm. Oh, he's got two. Where, where are they? Why can't I find them? Oh, they're hiding below the Mothership floor. There they are. Uh, no Storm yet. I think just because he doesn't have the energy for it. I think he might actually have Storm. Uh, our life's going to have to be careful. Of course, his economy was better throughout uh, the entire game, but we can see that he... Perhaps overdid it a little bit with just standing there and you know, I think his mistake was not microing his Vikings. Uh, if he just fall, oh, a little bit of drop in the back of the natural. At the same time, we've got a push outside the third base. Uh, so Jim is going to crush this push. Uh, but the drop doing good damage, and there is one more drop in the back of the main base, Kevin. So oh. Alive says if at first 
I cannot drop, then just start dropping anyway. And he is starting to find some openings and do some relatively good damage. Vikings, I'm sorry, Phoenixes are coming back to deal with the drop in the main. Oh, he might be able to pick up a fort or oh. something. He's going to, oh, that's a pretty big pilot as well. But here come oh, all the Phoenixes. Oh, man, and everything gets lifted. The forge is going to survive. So great play from Jim. Phoenixes wow. are the answer, apparently. And uh, we now have a maxed out Protoss against a 170 supply Alive. Alive has not been able to reestablish his Viking count. He's got 13 of them, but now there are 17 Phoenixes out. Suddenly, this is a Protoss army that I don't know that Alive can fight. Uh, he has a couple of Ghosts as well. EMPs are going to be very important, but I do agree with you, Ben. The Viking count is way lower. The Colossus count is still scary. I think once more we're going to have... Well, I don't I know how he got all. there, but... <laughs> nope. <laughs> and we'll never see the conclusion of that fight, guys. <laughs> May, uh, next time we check, the Marine has 18 kills. <laughs> <laughs> How did that happen? <laughs> Army of uh, Jim just uh, sh kind of circling outside the third slash fourth expansion of Alive. Oh, using Hallucination as well. It's going to make it a little harder for the Vikings to focus down. Look how oh much damage man, these Phoenix again, deal. The Phoenixes are just going to obliterate the Vikings. There are just too many Zealots charging in Colossi. Oh, not enough damage are on the ground, though. all going to go down. No, not quite. Here come the reinforcing Zealots. One Colossus running for the hills. Can the Zealots turn the tide? Uh, I think Alive will be fine for now. There's still a couple of Ghosts remaining. He's going to pick up the Ghosts right now. That's a really expensive pickup. But uh, Jim oh, is going to have to retreat. Great hold there by Alive. The EMPs landing on all those Phoenixes definitely made his life a little easier. So uh, that man no Graviton Beam. The fighting will continue. Zealots and Archons warped in. What a bizarre army. 12 Zealots, 11 Phoenix. Let's <laughs> uh, play Phoenix Zealot. What? Uh, it's working out okay. Uh, Jim yeah, that is, means uh, no meta he's still ahead in supply. 150 to about 130. And it's going to be easier to, for Jim to take a fifth base because he can just take this base over yeah. here. Uh, still hasn't taken the... Uh, more and more Archons being warped in. There are five meta facts out on the map right now, but... I guess uh, on this moment, Alive, uh, just somehow, he's going to drop once more. He's going to try to drop this fort base. Uh, there's not a single cannon out by Jim, by the way. Not a single cannon, not a single oh. high Templar defensively to make it a little bit easier. He's really purely relying on these Phoenixes. Look at the range, by the way, after uh, researching. Uh, uh, one more shot. Oh. 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 Is Tom Cruise driving that medevac? <laughs> yeah. So gets away with six hit points. <laughs> uh, and uh, these Marines are going to go to work in this natural... Uh, Reinforcements being warped in, and Phoenix is showing up, and Tom Cruise goes down. Aww. No surprise there. Then it wasn't Tom Cruise, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Another hit squad in the back of the third base, and the Phoenixes are here, but they're just going to lie on uh, the Zealot warp in. Alive is doing a pretty damn good job at least keeping Jim busy. Once more, there is a Marine with 10 HP <laughs> in the natural of Jim. This keeps happening. That's Tom Cruise. He jumped out <laughs> of the medevac. <laughs> <laughs> Mission impossible, you said. I don't think so. And uh, he's going to get a sixth kill before he finally gets hacked in half by a very angry zealot. But of course, man, those drops were not for free. Right now, Jim at 180 supply against a 160 supply Terran army. Uh, Alive is going to need some dream EMPs. Man, Jim makes his style look so strong. This uh, command center lifted, and it's actually going to get shot down. What are the upgrades on these phoenixes? I have to know. Plus one? Uh, no. Plus Whoa. two attack, plus one shield. So no wonder they're doing so well. And plus three is about to finish up as well. Wow. Breaking the meta. <laughs> <laughs> Phoenix is coming forward. You don't want to park over Marines, Phoenixes, and they, uh, they realize they're going to back off. Colossi supporting in the back, doing a great job of thinning out the bio uh, numbers alive in a really awkward position. Still managing to drop, however. Yeah, he has to worry about his army, but that drop is dealing so much damage, and that's actually going to slow down Jim quite a bit, because that is his fort base. He cannot afford to lose his fort base. Reinforcements coming in as well. A couple of Zealots are going to try to save the day, and I guess we will be fine for now. The main engagement is still going on, though. Yeah, Colossi doing great work. Phoenix is still outpowering the Vikings, and now with Archons charging oh up the God. ramp, I think the results of Game 1 is unfolding before our eyes. Jim with so much more army than alive. Phoenix is just parking over turrets. They don't even care, Kev. Wow. That's going to do it. Archons finishing off the remaining bio units. Phoenix is lifting up left and right, and the Colossus do still remain unscratched. Man, Jim made this style 